somebody in our house said to me, it, Philip's got a, a retirement party in the church on Sunday and you're preaching, Dad. And a little word dropped in my mind straight away. Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that puts his trust in the Lord. We have been singing this morning a lot about the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It doesn't matter how long you've been in your salvation. It doesn't matter whether you're a young person or a young person like me. You can laugh at that. I'm still young inside and I'm still asking God for a new adventure in him. Oh, taste and see. How hungry are you for the things of God? It doesn't matter how long you've been on the road. God wants to fill you with something new and something good in your life. God is not a stagnant God. He's always fresh. He's always new. <coughs> because his word says, Behold, I make all things new. And he's continually making things new. Behold, I will make all things new. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Open up your life. Open up your heart. Open up and tea and heat and joy. Enjoy the things of God. Open up your eyes to see what's in the Word of God. And the more we read the Word of God, the more we will discover how good God is, how faithful He is, and how He wants us you and me this morning to be rich in the things of himself. The, I have still got this hunger in my heart. I want to know more about him, more about his word, more about the joy of the Spirit and living in the life of the Spirit. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Are you feeling empty this morning? Do you need to be filled? Is there a hunger for something new and fresh in your spiritual life this morning? Come and taste. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, God is ne I'll say it again, God is never stagnant uh, and God is never poor and God is never, uh, what, what, what should I say? God is never, forget it, God is never poor. He always wants to give you and I the best. He wants to fill our hunger and our thirst. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, that's a good word. Oh, taste and see, it's exciting. It's exhilarating. And it's an exultation for all of us this morning to taste and see that the Lord is good. And I went back to a little story. You know, we can step back sometimes. I say, oh, I've had enough. I don't want any more. We can push the plate away. You know, you like little children. I don't want that. You know, push the plate away. That's what Peter did. He says, I'm going fishing. He pushed it away. Peter, of all people, he'd seen Jesus change the water into wine. He'd seen him meet the need of 5,000 people. He'd seen the blind eyes open. He'd seen, him, he'd seen him when he'd fall, that the Lord had picked him up and he still walked on the water with the Lord. And at that time he could say, I'm going back to my old life. I'm going fishing. And there's a little, little line in that and it says, and they caught nothing. Nothing. 
He had nothing to feed himself with. And he had nothing to feed others with. And sometimes we can make our mistakes. And we can turn our back. And like I say again, we can push the Lord to one side. And when things come along, we have nothing for ourselves. And we have nothing for anybody else. Not for our loved ones, not for our families. Not, not, not for our church, not for our people. We can say we don't want to push it away. But you know, I'm glad about Jesus. He was waiting. Peter and the rest of the disciples that went with him was hungry. They were cold. They were weary. They were despondent. I don't know how Jesus got to the, to the beach. He may have walked on the water again. But there on the beach, oh, I like this, there was a fire. There was fish. There was bread to those that are hungry. And he satisfied them all. You know, have you ever been to a bakery? and come out with a fresh loaf, just out of the oven. Well, where I lived in Thringston, there was a bakery called Maloney's. And my mum sent me for a fresh loaf to just come out. <coughs> of course, I put my hand in it and put my hand straight through because it was so fresh. You know, put your hand in. It's so fresh. And enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I wanted to encourage you this morning not to go back to where you were, but to go on with the Lord in a freshness, in a newness. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That night they caught nothing. And maybe you feel nothing this morning, but God is wanting to draw you to his banqueting table. He wants you and I to feed upon the goodness of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so that we might not only feed ourselves, and it's good to feed ourselves. It's good to feed ourselves on the richness of his word and to drink of the wonderfulness of his Holy Spirit. It's good, but it's not for selfishness that we do that. It's able to give out to others and to minister to others. In this work, in the church, in the people that are in need in this church at the moment, those that are despondent, those that are discouraged and feel like throwing the towel in, God says, God says, oh, taste and see of me. And see that I am good. The fire was fresh. The food was fresh. And the Lord was faithful to Peter. He said, lovest thou me? Go feed my sheep. He gave him something that he might feed others. Oh, taste and see. What an invitation. Jesus said to those disciples, Come and die. The little chorus says here, Come and die. The master calleth, Come and die. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. He who turned the water into wine and fed the multitude. The master says, Come and dine. Come and dine. Peter, come and dine. Come and dine. There's fresh food. I like, for it, first of all, fresh fire. You know, there's two elements in the house that I like. It's fire and water. You ask Eunice about that. I love fire. I love the fire of the Spirit. And it glowed. And there on the fire was the fish. I don't know how Jesus got the fish. But he knew how to fill the multitude. I don't know where he got the bread from. But he did say, I am the bread of life. And he gave it to the disciples. And he can minister to you and me this morning. What an invitation. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Listen. 
The psalmist said in 81 verse 10, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of Egypt. Open thy mouth and I will fill it. Remember, Egypt is a type of the world. Egypt is a place of bondage, a place of sadness, a place where you're kept down and depressed and awkward. But Jesus, the Lord says, I brought you out of there. I brought you out of Egypt. When we got saved, that salvation, he brought us out of the world into a new newness of life. We used to sing, we used to have that verse, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Salvation brings us out of the old into the new of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's deliverance. Because when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, he delivered them from their bondages and set them free. Hallelujah. And you know why they came out of Egypt? How they came out of Egypt? We've just been celebrating. They applied the blood to the doorposts and the lintels. They didn't put it on the foot on the on the foot on the step. You don't walk over the blood of Jesus. It's something precious. It's something wonderful. But he put it over the doorposts and the lintel and we could, they walked out. There was deliverance for the children of Israel. There was a fulfillment. They had been enjoyed. As they went out of Egypt and went into the wilderness, there was manna every day. Every day, fresh manna. Fresh manna. God was good to the children of Israel. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. is good. When God wants this wonderful salvation, I enjoy it every day. When I look around the world and I see people I hate, I talk to people that don't even know God, don't want to even know God. But thank God I know Him as a personal Saviour. And I can enjoy the communion and the fellowship. And I can taste the richness of His love and His grace and His mercy. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know this verse, and I'm going to say it again. Open thy mouth and I will fill it. That's for not, not for novice preachers. God's got to fill your heart before He can fill your mouth. You may not like what I've said, but that's true. You know what it meant to open your mouth? It was someone to go by a king. And as they went by the king, he'd say, open the mouth, and he'd put jewels in it. He'd put food in it. He'd put drink into it. And they would enjoy the luxuries of what the king has given them. Open thy heart. Open thy mind. Open thy life unto him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and he will give you more than what you ask for. Oh, hallelujah. They came out of Egypt. And I like that little line. And they spoiled Egypt by leaving it. They got 400 years back pay. They took the jewels and the crap and the gold. And as they went out of Egypt, they didn't go out empty handed. God is a good God. And He won't leave you empty handed as you come out of Egypt and come walking with the Lord in this salvation and tasting and the riches of goodness of God. He will not leave you empty handed, but He'll fill your life to overflowing. Oh, rejoice this morning in your wonderful salvation. For whosoever findeth me finds life. My old friend Dan Matt Vickers used to say, if my religion was dead, I'd find a new religion. He used to say that often. Whosoever findeth life Findeth me. Hallelujah. And findeth life and obtains the favor of the Lord. 
Do you know you that know the Lord this morning? You're in favour, you know. You're in favour. You're in favour with him. Whosoever findeth me findeth life. The world is looking for life. But I've got it. You have got it. But know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. And you found favour with an almighty God. We've just been celebrating again. I just read something and I danced. When Christ shouted, it is finished, it was never finished for us. Because it's a continuum. It was open the door to all the riches and all the blessings and all the goodness of God. Christ shouted, it is finished, but it's never been finished for us because we can enjoy all the pleasures of what Calvary brought to us. Oh, discover the life is found in tasting of the goodness of the Lord. Song of Solomon said, I sat down under his shadow. I sat down under his presence with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste he brought me into the banqueting house and his banner over me his love he sat me down that's a place of rest a place of restoration and he brought me in and I tasted the fruit. The fruits of God are sweet. The word of God is like honey. I like honey. Tasting the sweetness of God <coughs> in his presence. And I drank of the joy of his love. The love of God is past finding out it's immeasurable but he says I sat down and I tasted the fruit and I enjoyed and I drank of the joy of his love oh taste and see that the Lord is good and the drawing power of his love brings us into a banquet of rest and peace and love within the pavilion of our wonderful Lord Jesus Christ. All oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Two little verses from Jeremiah. One of these verses, a few years ago, I was walking across, there's a wide road in London now and this verse came to me Jeremiah 31 14 I will satiate the soul of my people and shall satisfy them with my goodness as I was putting this word together and as I read this I remember walking down that road in London now and I danced I will satisfy the soul of my people and shall be satisfied with the goodness of the Lord. What does that satisfaction mean? And another verse in that same chapter says, I will satiate the weary soul and I will replenish every sorrowful soul. I will refill it with something better. And that word replenish, just before I got out of my car, I was looking through my word and it caught my eye again. Replenished, refill. In Genesis 1.28, that word is used. When he, he created Adam and Eve, and he said to Adam and Eve, it's in the King James Version, not in any other version. King James Version, go and replenish. Go and refill that which I've created. Go and refill. What a mess they made of it. We're here today. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
but they went and replanted. And again, in Genesis 28, verse 1, when the floods and all have been drowned, in Noah, when he stepped out of the ark, God said to Noah, go and replenish the earth. Refill it again. Refill it again. And I want to say this this morning. He wants to satisfy you. He wants to replenish that. God doesn't want you to keep your, I nearly said your bread, stale. God is never stale. He wants us always to be fresh in him. I was satisfied. I will replenish the soil. What a wonderful, wonderful thought that is this morning. He will replace it and replenish it with his joy with his blessing, with his strength, with his salvation. You can open up your eyes and see God doing something for you personally. He's taking out the sorrow. What's that verse in Proverbs? It says, there's no adding to sorrow, but God gives joy and peace. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Are you weary? Are you tired? Are you on the job to find strength? And there's sorrow in your heart. God says there's healing. There's healing for you and me this morning. There's healing. But the healing of his presence right into this service and just minister to you this morning and as you taste this love, the goodness of God the healing of his presence can come right in it doesn't matter how far how difficult how wretched you feel God can refill it with the riches of his love and his power 1 Peter 2 says, If so be your taste it, that the Lord is gracious. Feed on the goodness of the Lord and keep your trust and your faith in him. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep your trust. Hang on. Grasp it. And keep your trust and your faith in the Lord. The circumstances may be difficult. The circumstances may be beyond what you're thinking. And you can't cope with it. But keep your trust in the Lord. And keep feeding on the faithfulness of God. And he will strengthen your faith. That you may go forward in him. And they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fullness of the house, and you will give them to drink of the river of your pleasure. There's three things in the word of God. There's a well, there's a river, and there's a fountain. And every one has to do with the freshness and the fruitfulness of God. You know, the woman at the well, I learnt something a fortnight ago, and it threw me this deep. You know, Jesus sat on the well of Jacob. And it is a woman that had tried love five times. And that, gel, that well represents where Jacob fell in love with Rachel. It was a well of love that Jesus was sitting on waiting for the woman that felt unloved, unsatisfied. And here's the, my Lord, I must needs go through Samaria. And there it's on the well of love. Do you know this morning, he loves you. He loves you. And he's sick. And he waits. And here's that lady. Do you know a heart was more empty? 
and more heavier than the pot she was carrying. It was more empty and more heavier than it had ever been in her life. And she, she never knew that she was going to meet my Lord. She never knew that she was going to hear the words of love. The words of satisfaction. And as she come down with a heavy heart, and she laid everything before the Lord, I have no husband. I am no one that really cares for me. I am nothing. And Jesus says to her, give me a drink. Sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. It was well over 175 to 100 feet deep. You've got nothing. You've got nothing to offer me. But he sat on the well of love. And he opened up. He opened up to her. They shall be abundantly satisfied. She was satisfied. Jesus said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, you would ask of him and he will give you water, living water. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be feeling like a guy Abraham cast out Agar into the desert. He gave her a bottle of water and some bread. You know, your bottle could fall, can get empty. Empty with your failures. Empty with your tears. Empty with your sorrows. Empty with your fears. But you know what the Lord did? He turned it around. And he showed her a well. A well that restored life to the child and to her. And not only that, he spoke to her and gave her a word of promise. Your son will be a great nation. And when we come to the well of God, God will speak fresh words to us. Words of comfort. Words of exultation. Even a word of rebuke sometimes. And we don't like that, do we? I don't know how I ever told you. I got up one morning, I started to pre uh, pray, not preach. I'm always doing that. I was preaching in my dream the other day, in the night, the other night. And I, I was waiting on the Lord and I was asking the Lord about, about a need. He says, you don't want me to answer that, do you? He said, just worship me. Because sometimes we can pray and God says to us, I'll send weakness afterwards. I won't send blessing. If I answer that, your road, it won't come that road. It'll, it'll do more harm than good. And it shook me. It shook me. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Sometimes I believe that the people of God have lost the heart of worship. Privately, publicly, and not just all churches. We can bang the drums, we can play the music, but God wants, like the woman spoke at the well, they that must worship God must worship Him in, in spirit and in truth. Learn to worship the Lord. Learn to worship the Lord in private. And I tell you that if you learn to worship the Lord in private, in spirit and in truth, you'll come into the church and the pastor won't know what to do with you. Because you'll set the church on fire. Sorry, Chris. All oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. For with you is the fountain of light. And in your light we see light. What a challenge. How hungry are you? 
Are we thirsty for the things of God? I'm going to say something now. Philip knows what I'm going to say. I didn't tell him what I was going to say, but I told him I weren't going to hit it. I'm not hitting out. God doesn't have tea parties. God has a revival. Because God is always revival. And if ever, if ever we get down, I have learned to, to revive ourselves in the things of God. God wants to revive us afresh. But how hungry are we? How hungry are we? How thirsty are we? It only comes by one way. Obeying the word of God and prayer. Prayer. Pray without ceasing. Seeking God for fresh revelation, for fresh food from his word. And a fresh drink from the river of life and from the pleasures of God. Not from the pleasures of the world. I'll taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who puts his trust in the Lord. I'll go back to one thing. You may be weary. Jesus comes, bringing life and gladness all around. His heavenly guest banish unbelief and sadness and changing our weary us into that rest. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Try it. Experience it. The fullness of God and you will discover that it can meet all your needs and mine. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and blessed is the man that puts